Hi, welcome back to Queer Bake. Uh, I'm so excited in Barcelona right now because I managed to get rhubarb, rhubarb. It's been so long since I've had really uh, fresh rhubarb. Um, last time I was in Ireland, I had to get some from my mom's garden, chop it, freeze it, and fly it back over. Uh, you just, it's not found here, but I've been able to get a, a supplier now. So um, I'm gonna be making lots of rhubarb things while it's in season. So what we're going to make now is rhubarb and strawberry pie. I'm um, going to get started quickly. So we need about 500 grams of the rhubarb washed, cut about half an inch into little pieces. And the strawberries, I'm just going to cut the ends off and then quarter them, okay? Um, it's very quick to cook this. Uh, we're going to do the, the stew part first. We're going to let it cool and then I'm going to show you how I put it in a pie, okay? So I'm chopping the rhubarb. Like I said, about half an inch length. Uh, the best way to cook the rhubarb is if you have an enamelware pan. I'm going to use this one. So just a splash of cold water in here, okay? Um, then we're going to knock in our, our rhubarb. I love these strawberries. We want to put in a heap dessert spoon of brown sugar and the same in the white sugar okay we're kicking this over a low heat i'm going to get a little wooden spoon in there so we start mixing it also another tip that uh that my mom gave me from my granny is if you put just because you want the rhubarb to be just slightly sweet but a bit of tart so a tiny sprinkle of bicarb of soda uh, Northern Ireland's friend by carbon soda. We put that in. So this is going to start to stew. It'll probably take about 10 minutes till we get to a nice consistency. Okay, so there's a bit of juice forming and um, because we don't want to get a watery pie, okay, with the stew, what I'm going to do is add a dessert spoon roughly of corn flour into a little cup and I'm going to siphon off a little bit of this um, strawberry rhubarb juice Mix it in the cup and then throw it back in. So I'm just going to show you this. Okay, into the cup a little bit more. And mix it in. That's just to thicken my mixture up. That's pretty smooth. So I'll put that back in now. But I think that the rhubarb's just softened enough. I don't want it to separate completely. Um, now this is still a little bit bitter so this, I'm going to add my third dessert spoon but of brown sugar. So we've had one brown, one white, so this is another brown, okay. I'm going to tip that in and we put that into taste, okay, depending on people's preferences. I'm going to give that a stir. So I'm just going to tip it out because what I want it to do now is to cool so we can put it in the pie. And also um, it's going to evaporate so the, the sauce is going to reduce a little bit more. We've got ready, this is nice and cool now, it's cool to the touch. This is the rhubarb and strawberry stew. Um, this is my pie dish. This is about 20 to 22 centimeters of Pyrex pie dish. You can use a metal pie dish, whatever you've got at hand, okay, that, that's oven proof. Um, and this is my dough. So uh, this is my recipe for slightly sweetened pastry, okay? Um, this is good for mince pies, apple pies, and our beautiful rhubarb and strawberry pie that we're making now. Uh, you can check my other YouTube video with the, the, the fast recipe for this, okay? I didn't want to add on to this video and take up another five minutes of your time. So um, I've got this ready. This has been in the fridge for 10 minutes, so it's ready to roll. So we're going to go over to my stainless steel counter to do some pastry rolling for the pie. Um, also, I've just put the oven on to preheat, so we should be ready to put this in the oven in about 10 minutes, and the oven will be hot at 200 degrees by then, okay? Let's get rolling. Okay guys, so I brought over a little bit of flour for this from my rolling surface. Got my rolling pin and my sharp knife. So depending on the size of your pie dish, uh, this is I'm going to cut just over half. This is for this size pie dish. And the bigger half is going to go on the bottom, okay? okay I'm going to cut it. This is the piece of pastry that we're going to be rolling out for the bottom of the dish. This one is the top. I'm going to put it face down. 
just because I want it to set as it is, I'm going to put this back in the fridge. So first up, a little bit of flour on the work surface, not too much, a little bit of flour on my rolling pin. So flat side down, I'm just going to hold it in my hands. This is nice and cold, but what I want to do now is I'm going to start pressing it without letting it crack. I'm going to press it with my hands because I want the warmth in my hands to contribute to the top not cracking on me. So I'm just bringing this down so it's about a palm width and then I can start rolling it with my roller, okay? Just gently and then a quarter turn. If you want to put some flour underneath, gently lift it. Just add a little dusting of flour but not too much, okay? You don't want the mixture to dry out. Okay, by putting the dish on top, I can see I've got the right um, the right size now for my dish. So I'm going to put the dish right to the side of it. This is the part where we're going to lift the pastry up. Just let it fall into your dish. What I'm going to do is just push it down in the edges here. You don't want the fold. You don't want to fold these folds over. You want to try and flatten them out, and just let it fall into the dish is better. And then with my fingers, I'm going to go around the edges of the pastry now. Okay, and finally, I'm going to run my finger on the inside edge because I don't want any air pockets to affect this. I'm going to give it three tiny little fricks. I'm going to put this in the freezer for a minute while I roll the other side out. This is my other side, okay? And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm spinning it, applying a little bit of pressure to seal the edges. A fun bit, guys, about to happen. Um, first, I'm going to get a little bit of milk around the edges. Really light. We're going to use the milk to to paste on the top of the pie as well because it helps give it a nice golden color. Uh, rhubarb and strawberry mix going in now, okay? You can spread this out or you can just shake it, like give it a little wobble to spread it really evenly in the pie. So there we go, we're ready. Now what I'm gonna do with my fingers Really gently just start pushing it on top. If you got sticky fingers when you're doing this, you can just apply a little bit of flour. So I'm gonna do a little, a little crust on it now as well. So first of all, just making sure this is nice and even. And then I'm gonna run my finger on the inside as well because again, I wanna flatten out any possible air pockets to this. And finally, dipping my thumbs into the flour, I work my way around the pie, make a little squiggle with my thumbs. Nearly finished, nearly ready to go in the oven. But two things. First of all, I'm going to put brush more milk on the top. I'm just going to really, really lightly just brush it around the sides of the pie here and in the middle with my sharp knife. I'm going to make a couple of little slices in the pie. So I have this beautiful pie about to go in the oven. Uh, for about 20-25 minutes, um, keep an eye on it. It depends on your oven as well, okay? And we'll have a pie ready soon. So, who wanted a rhubarb and strawberry pie? I've got it ready. There we go. Lovely. Um, this will take about 20-30 minutes to cool down if you're going to eat it straight away. Um, otherwise, I would leave it two or three hours if you want to try and move it out of its dish. Uh, and I always put the tea cloth over the top. So, now you see me, now you don't. Um, this has been Zara. I'm in the Quiet Bait Kitchen. And please give me a like if you like my video. And I love the new subscribers. You can follow me on Instagram. And if you happen to make this pie yourself, you can tag me at Rhubarb Barcelona, Quiet Bake. And I'm saying goodbye now so I can go. I need some pie. Bye.